Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Matt Markin of TriStar Knives. Matt's work is new to me. As a matter of fact, a friend of his reached out and exposed me to it directly. And I'm really glad he did. Uh, this gentleman knows my tastes and uh, thought I should know Matt's work. TriStar's custom and small batch production EDC fixed blades, neck knives, and hunters are beautiful to look at with functional sleek profiles, often sporting sandmai blades and handsome material combinations on the handles. Uh, now, I look forward to meeting Matt and finding out more about TriStar Knives, what drives him, and uh, how he uh, is making these beautiful things. Uh, but first, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and download the show uh, to your favorite podcast app so you can listen whilst on the go. And as always, visit us on Patreon if you think what we do here is worth uh, a little bit of extra scratch every month. We'd really appreciate it. Uh, you get extra content, stickers knife giveaways, all sorts of stuff. Uh, so check us out there. Quickest way to do that is to go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. That's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. Hey, Matt, welcome to the show. How you doing, sir? Good. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Uh, I've been uh, on a on a couple year long tear now in my knife collecting uh, where I'm I'm really obsessed with working fixed blades into my EDC uh, as a suburban person working in a in a, uh, a a very domesticated world, it can sometimes be difficult. So we look for like smaller knives, neck knives, EDC fixed blades, and these kind of things. So Absolutely. I've been, yeah, I've been trolling the internet and trolling Instagram and and looking at knives like these and knives like yours. And I'm really glad I was exposed to them. Uh, tell me about how you started making them and and how you found this niche. Well, I've been uh, carrying knives since I was really young, and I, I use them hard for work every day. I work in the automotive industry, so prying and cutting and all that. And I'd always wear out folding blade, folding knives, no matter what the, the quality of them. They always wear out the pivot, clip falls off. So I got turned on to a small fixed blade and spent good money on it, but uh, realized I should just start making them myself. So I started just going at it, read about it enough, learned enough, and just started working in, with tools and uh, learning more about it. So I kind of just grew into it actually as a hobby and trying to turn it into something now. Well, what, uh, first of all, everyone, I'm sure, well, I got to know, what was the small fixed blade that you spent a fair amount of money on? It that was you... a, uh, let's see, you know, uh, I have it around here, but uh, I can't think of the name of it right now. Uh, Bradshaw... Oh, a Bradford. Bradford, probably. there you go. Brad yeah, Bradford Warrencleft. I, I like Warrenclefts and downturn blades, so I ended up picking that one up and liking it, but it just got me hooked on fixed blades at that point. So you use them hard in the automotive industry. You're you're using you're using it as a hard use tool, not just as something yeah. that's cool to have. Yep. So uh, I'm always after quality tools. You can have many many folding knives of any quality if they're attractive and work for you, but. Uh, I uh, like a collection of everything, really. Okay, so uh, so you start working on fixed blade knives. What from from the the Bradford? Uh, what did you want to do? How did you want to improve on that uh, to make it a better knife for how you use them? Well, it uh, it's it's great. The that particular knife, great steel, perfect size, and all. It's just uh, I didn't want to have to spend the money again on another fixed blade when I figured uh. I like fabricating things. I like uh, making things. So I figured rather than buying the next knife, I could just invest in the tooling and start figuring it out for myself. And that kind of just led me into it that way. 
Uh, the size of it's great, and uh, really, when when you start off making knives, you got an idea of what you what you want to do, but it it doesn't ever just go to plan. It kind of shapes itself as time goes on, and that's that's how I've gone with it. What was your first model like? Because now I know what the I, I know what the Bradford Guardian. Uh, that's a great knife, and I know what the Warncliffe looks like. Uh, so, what did what was your first knife? Uh, honestly, it was a. Uh, just a rough, I don't have it here with me, but just a rough shape, a smaller knife, a kind of a handle based off an Ace Biblio kind of kind of oh, shape yeah. to it. Just something that, that flowed out of me at the time. It wasn't the dream knife by any means, or it was just something to get started, really. Well, yeah, okay, just so people know what we're talking about, do you have any examples of your knives uh, that you could hold up right now? Yeah, this is a this is one of a the current run that I'm I'm working on right now. It's a 52100 with Tarot Tough handle and uh, just brass washers in there. And this one is uh, what I'm calling a sheep's foot. It's it's hard to say what's what nowadays, but uh, <laughs> that, that's what I'm calling this one. And uh, as a for the drop point equivalent of that kind of thing is a. Ooh. About yeah. the same thing, just tarot tough, and this is the gray version. I have a a tan of each each one in in tan as well. They're uh, black oxide stone wash, so it's it's a little uh, shinier whenever it comes down down to the the finish than acid etch, but it, it gives a nice uniform finish and just all. These these are um, just great pocket size. I actually carry them in my pocket. I, I created pocket sheath for it what is uh, that a three inch blade yeah just just at three inches i think overall let's see if i got a tape measure around here i think the overall is a uh, six and a half mm. so it's it's a full my i got large hands but it's a full four four finger grip on it just good for nice nice little use Keeping yeah those both those both have a real modern look, but uh, very utilitarian. Uh, the the drop point, like uh, it's got it's got a real traditional hunter vibe, though it's very it's kind of futuristic a little bit. And same thing with the uh, with the warrant or with the sheep's foot. Well, the odd thing is, when I first started this, I was always on the chase of the perfect skinning knife, and and honestly, I've never been hunting, so I don't know what it takes to be a perfect skinning knife. But that seems to be whenever you're looking over custom knives, everyone's making beautiful wood handled skinning knives. So after chasing that down, just trying to hone my skills in, I, uh, I realized I'm a, I'm an everyday carry kind of guy. So, uh, I just started developing my taste and, and design for that. So, so these two that you were holding up, uh, they are your, uh, small batch production knives, right? Yeah. Right now there's six of each of those, uh, profiles with this, with this particular material and, and setup. Now, I usually try to find a profile that I, I like and I can keep it into production and, and the drop point's definitely gonna be one of those. But uh, so so I'll, I usually will try not to run the same profiles with exact same materials. Kind of give someone, the buyers that they got something limited production a little special. And the same same goes with the sheaths on these. Uh, I have uh, the first, First prototype sheaths right behind me. I'll grab it really quick. This is a this is the first sheath for this mm. this setup. So it is oh, a leather nice. sheath. I always try to do something artistic on them. Uh, this one just happens to have a raven on the thing, and it's it's stitched off. Wow, a little different than what cool. you normally see. Yeah, wait, wait. Did you? How did you get that uh, image on there? I have a uh, laser engraver. God, that's cool. Uh, so, so I drew it in my phone and transferred it over into the point of uh, setting it up in my laser etching machine, and it it burns it in there, and then I'll go through and do paint work on it, and and uh, just play around with it with paint and stain and dyes until I like it. So that's what I've settled on this one. So these twelve will get this particular style sheath, and then I just won't make any more of this this artwork sheath so it's a different theme for the next run kind of thing that's uh that sheath is really beautiful with that raven and and your logo is this uh 
and then you spent all that time. I mean, it's not just that the line imagery, but the 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 texture you have there with all the color and stuff. So this is each sheath is a unique work of art in and of itself, as each knife is a unique and that's, uh, work that's of tooling. I, that's exactly it. I want someone to have feels like they have something that you can't just pick up off the shelf. Well. Kydex would definitely be easier on me, and I do want to take it up. As of right now, uh, these these limited run leathers are just where my tooling's at, and I'll I'll eventually get to the point where I'm using Kydex and probably speeding up production with it, honestly. So, well, how, are you an artist? Uh, are you a draftsman? I used to be a tattoo artist uh, in my younger twenties. So, uh, oh, while I did that and made my money with it, I just I didn't find it to keep me keep me interested as the the growing man that i've become so family man kind of thing so right. I've, I've ditched it but i still have a an eye for artwork and and it, it comes to me fairly easily and you can still draw man and you still know color that that is really cool do you have any other of those uh, sheaths in front of you here here is a here is the first run it'll be a little bit harder to see on this one it is a uh, it's a wolf oh yeah 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 so it uh which uh here's a here's a little sample of that as well so it's it's just a uh burned in this was a little this was a little card for uh telling you telling you what how to keep and take care of it i kind of thing just so there's there were there were 10 of these in this run with uh different handle materials just another little small small knife that's easy to carry kind of thing this is what started off these little knives for me is a just easy easy carry knives these runs uh i've been carrying one of these every day for uh since the beginning of the years whenever i got these so there, are... there were all dimalux handle materials so there's you can't really tell on this screen but they're they're all different colored and yeah, yeah, I mean, I could tell one of them has a greener tint, one of yeah. them sort of a, uh, but those are really sleek, very good looking knives and, and the perfect size, I think, uh, for the kind of, I mean, I carry fixed blades, like I said, all the time, uh, this, even though I'd like to walk around with a big Bowie on my hip, yeah. like the smaller, the better, uh, but, but if I can get four fingers on it, um, that, that's your, that's your, your winner with them yeah i mean that's a winner for me and i saw you you gripping that um but i i, I really like that sleek profile looks like a, a racing boat uh cool little uh yeah it's a uh, everyone like your kids having fidget spinners and fidget toys these are grown man fidget knives are yeah. on this first run i've rounded the spine over so just you could play around with it in your hand like you would a, a knife and it rolls around like that one that one there that was on the screen but uh yeah, they're to me. To me, the smaller there's a certain point where it's too small, but um, it, it's a good knife that uh, the size of it uh, wants you to carry. You want to carry it every day. You you have those nice big knives, but you're not gonna throw them on your hip for the day for work. You you just need a, a nice cutting tool in your pocket. So yeah, yeah, and and uh, for people like you who are making these knives, and I've I've spoken to a number of of uh knife makers who specialize in these kind of knives um it's it's a double-edged sword <laughs> i'll use that because uh people want to carry fixed blades uh they're less apt to these they are more apt to but you still have to convince them to carry them over folders absolutely uh, yeah. So uh, you have a very de definite uh, you already had a, a de very definite preference over folders well, I would love to make folders. I, I don't currently have a milling machines or a, or even the the ready knowledge to to just jump into it and actually be successful. I, it's gonna you see those guys that make beautiful folders worth all kinds of money, and you'd love to have one. But I'm, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm at that level just because I can make a fixed blade knife. So while while in my knife making bro future, I'd like to add it to the mix. But as of right now, I'm I'm on this hunt on the hunt for a a stable quality with my my full my fixed blade knives for now just consistency that that i can repeat over and over again yeah i was talking in terms of usage i'm sorry if i wasn't no, yeah. clear with that but like uh in in your line of work where you're hard using a knife that to have that fixed blade sure 
uh, you know, that sure feeling in hand and and just knowing that there's not a weak point right yeah. where the sharp point meets your hand. Uh, it's kind of nice to know. How did the automotive industry and, and what you do in it, how did it uh, benefit you or uh, help you out when setting out to start doing this? Well, uh, I was working as a, uh, I've always liked metal work, uh, fabrication work. So I was working at a hot rod shop as the metal fabricator there, just doing all the rust repair and panel modifications and rebuilding these cars. And it was a fun job, but had to move on. And I've been in that line, line of work, at least hobby work, even since I was very young. So this kind of just naturally came about just because a knife project is such a, a small project. You can really get through it quickly where uh, cars, cars could take you years. So this kind of just mm -hmm. claimed my, my attention span where I can get that sense of fulfillment in making these things and the uh, fabrication just naturally, I had half the tools I needed for it and it just spoke to me, I suppose. <laughs> you talked about repeatability and uh, of precision uh, you know, in, in your output, how do you ensure that? Uh, just, I guess I got a, a fairly calibrated eye. I'm, I'm, I am leaning towards, uh, having my blanks at least once I decide on certain ones, water jet cut so I can add machines to the mix. I do have a, a CNC plasma machine and a router table that I'd like to utilize. And, and I figured while utilizing those tools and uh, with the aid of a computer, you should be able to count on all your specs and measurements where it'll come down to uh, me still hand grinding bevels, but I've, I've done that. I, I do it freehand and I've worked at it for, I'm probably going on about two and a half years now of freehand grinding work. And I'm, I'm satisfied with my skill set and always growing and developing more, but it's, it's a, uh, I keep on it enough that I, I feel like I, I'm getting better with every knife that I make. So uh, I can usually land my grinds just fine. And uh, it's the profiles and all that that I'd like to be able to speed up naturally just with the aid of computers and, that, and everything else. Yeah. Nowadays. Yeah. It, it helps out. Take it kind of from a, a hobbyist standpoint to to a small production. I know, I know some guys as a hobbyist are fast as can be, and I don't understand it, but yeah. I'll do what I can do. And uh, if computers, computers and machines can help me out a little, I'd, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. I always talk about like if Rembrandt had, had uh, access to a 4k camera, would he use it? Well, of course yeah. he would, <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. He was using the best tools he had at his disposal. Um, with, uh, with, uh, well, what is your process? I was going to say with water jet, but, but you haven't done that yet. What is your process kind of soup to nuts? But, oh. so, so I have a drawing book where I just draw all kinds of knives. I, I'm just constantly sketching profiles just, just to keep a mind around ideas. And if I'll come back to them. So once I land on one, I'll, I'll transfer it to this, this, like a piece of plywood. It's three sixteenths. I have a bunch of it left over from some sort of house project. So I'll make sure I like the way it fits in my hand and then uh, proportions of it. And then I'll, I'll scribe it out on my piece of steel, use a bandsaw, drill and, and refine it with a grinder like, like majority of people do. And uh, then you come up with, this is, I actually did this one last night. It still is in rough grind, but I, I threw this handle on it oh, that's uh, cool. this afternoon after work, but it's a, uh, I still got to do the final grind on it. So this is just a uh, straight out of the kiln and quench and temper. So, so, I, so that, that is the mock-up you were just holding yeah, up. Yeah. Look that, at that. That is so cool. That's the same knife. Yeah. With the harpoon and that, that yeah, is just a, so I got to say the handle on this, and you can see that uh, handle running through some of your designs uh, is evocative of the old uh, gun stock handle. Yeah. Uh, I, I was, I uh, started making those connections. I've watched uh, whenever you you've gone over those in a couple of your other podcasts, and I've oh, yeah. I followed Jack Wolf knives uh, recently. I found them and and started to notice it's it's definitely similar. It gives you gives you good. I like to segment my fingers and two two to two kind of thing rather than mm -hmm. a single up front. Kind of gives you more options on your grip and that that Jack Wolf even that gun stock definitely is uh, something that I I would prefer. I would think. Yeah, uh, uh, it was a revelation to me for sure. Um, I always just thought it was for looks uh, on that one. Um, but on yours, uh, 
on the size of it, especially, I like that it's a two finger, um, you know, two finger steps. It's not a partition. Yeah. It's a step. And that's what yeah. I prefer. Um, so, so yeah, the two finger on a small knife like that definitely works. I that's agree with you. A single that's something I've been trying to develop over time is, uh, this is an older knife of mine. Uh, oh, this like is a that. W2 with a hamon and it's, I used to chase W two down for the phone and realize it had me hand sanded my whole life away. So I kind of, <laughs> kind of slowed down on it. But this one is a the single finger, just tr traditional style. And uh, I started to move away from from this probably this year as I started changing styles up. And then uh, it led me into yet another W two. Uh, Hamon's still there, just not quite as quite as intricate as the other one. But it. Uh, same thing with this one. You kind of separate your your two fingers. Your now this is two. this is your hunter, right? This is your hunter. Yeah, this model. is a this was a made for a friend of mine in Louisiana. That I grew up with, and uh, this it's like a he's he's a hunter. He truly is. So I try to make something that he'd be willing to carry every day and actually use. So uh, we'll see if he likes it. I still need to get it out to him. He's been patient enough to let me hold on to it. Hold so, on to it until, until this day, so you oh. can see it on this podcast here. Oh, nice! That looks so. really sweet in the uh, in the sheath. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hold up that handle again, though? Uh, to me, when I saw this and and uh, on your website and saw that it was labeled uh, hunter uh, hunting knife, the handle, um, which already made sense to me, but made even more sense because it's got a sort of step. It's got a two finger two by two partition there. But each one kind of flares out at the at a similar angle. And I also have never field dressed an animal, but I've watched it on YouTube. Yeah. You know, and there seems to be an action with the fingers and the wrists that See, that, that handle would be handy for. Yeah, to me, to me to try to get a, a like a forward grip on here would be your ideal. You're trying to guard the point of the knife with your finger so you're not cutting into what you don't want to and the guts wise but it uh right. it lets you let you handle this thing forward and still have nice nice control over the 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 handle without without uh, i would imagine with blood on it it'd be a different story but it, it in my mind it seems like it's a uh, the ideal ideal way to grip a knife whenever you're going to be utilizing it in that way so yeah, it sort of wedges itself in in your grip. Uh, now, <clears throat> excuse me. In my open, I said um, San My Steel. I think I was making a mistake seeing the Hamon in the W two. Uh, how was that made? Is that that clay? Where, yeah, how do you do that? absolutely. It's a it is a W two and a differential heat treatment. So you you apply an insulation insulator clay on it whenever you're going through your your heat treat, you got a specific temperature recipe that you, you dialed in. And I, I, uh, I just fell in love with W2 at the beginning of all this. But like I said, this, uh, this, uh, you have to hand sand, you, you imagine hand sanding hardened tool steel up to 2000 grit, just to dip it in acid and start over. So it's a, it's a time consuming thing, but it, it makes beautiful knives. And this, yeah. this is a, this is truly a mono steel. It's a, It'll show you some version of where my clay was. I, I was trying to take notes every time I would do one of these and uh, basically recreate a knife similar to this one with this activity in here. And it's always different. It's always difficult. Some guys have uh, some guys have figured it out, and uh, I know that uh, yeah. I have not yet for a repeatability on the hamon. At least I can I can repeat a hamon. It's just don't get this this level of activity, which is the best the best amount i've created when you talk about activity you're not talking about the uh, the waviness of the line itself are, are you are you or are you talking about what's happening within the line well uh, the... you have you have a this is the this is the softer side of the top side and this is the hardened steel of course mm -hmm. and the, the darkness that you see underneath the uh the clear line is the ashy of it it's a it's just Part of what happens, the magic of the hamon in there. So it, it is hardened steel, but it's a, it just has, uh, I don't know what you'd exactly call it. it. It just has all that character in there. Yeah, yeah. Character where that, is this perfect. particular knife is my favorite I've ever done, where here's another one. And you can see that it, it's definitely there. 
and it, it looks cool and all, but it's it's nowhere near the activity that this one shows. So it's it's interesting. I don't know if it, it was because of this big fuller in here that allowed the, the heat to do its thing. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how I got this one to look this way, but I haven't been able to recreate it at least. So you do your grinding before about 80 percent you do okay. about 80 percent or so and then uh then put your clay on there heat treat it and and do your thing from there okay so that way you can you can well you can it's a shallow hardening steel so it, if it's too thick you'll grind out all the hormone you didn't you didn't actually uh so so you you want to get rid of some of the steel to begin with so that when it comes time to actually insulate it it, it has that material to do its job with all right so you're not grinding it away yeah yeah, and, so and how, that's where that's where hand sanding comes into it. Is you, you're kind of wanting to be delicate, not to to ruin it. You want to see what the steel has to offer in your heat treat there, rather than just watch the machine burn it burn it all out of there. Yeah, right. And so, but you have to do that and then dip and repeat, right? Yeah, you once you once you hand sand it to a nice polished finish, you use some sort of acid, you, whether it's ferric chloride, lemon juice, coffee, whatever it is, and it'll ruin your polish. But then you got to re repolish and and do it over and over until you get the, the look that you're trying to achieve. And sometimes it comes out amazing. Sometimes it becomes out amazing, but not quite as active as others. So it's a, it's an interesting process. That's why I say you take notes and you're always trying to, you're, it'll kind of become an obsession of yours to try to figure this out, but it, it's a, a lot more difficult to, at least for me to, to recreate exactly, figure out exactly what I've done to get a certain look there. Well, well, I imagine too. Uh, you're going for the certain look, but also, uh, you have to be aware of the hardness of the the hardenable steel. Yeah. Um. So, so when you're uh, now that you're not doing the hamon as much, you said you've kind of strayed, not strayed, but uh, you've moved away from W two because it's so damn labor intensive. <laughs> um. Uh. So now, do you have a uh, a, a different sort of approach in terms of um, how you how you heat treat it. Uh, well, I mean, obviously you have you're not covering it with clay, but is it a totally well? Actually, new regime? actually, I'm just skipping out on W two altogether, and uh, I'm using a lot of fifty two one hundred right now. Okay. It seems I like I like the high hardness of uh, W two takes a real fine edge. So with um, fifty two one hundred, you you also can have a high hardness level uh, and and keep a nice fine cutting edge on there. So that seems to be my, my go-to at the moment. I'd love to get into stainless, but it's just, uh, I don't have a, uh, I don't have a way to cryo treat it at the like moment, it. which is, yeah. yeah, I would love to get into it. It's just, it's not the time quite yet. I, I like the idea of well, first of all, I like high carbon steel. Period, and, and I also like uh, putting patinas on them. And yeah, that that that's another kind of character that I enjoy. Plus, you can you can easily polish those out and and yeah. redo patinas. So I like the idea of fifty two one hundred, but I also like the idea of it because it's a ball bearing steel, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that came from aerospace i think uh it's been around i think uh since the late 1800s even oh. uh, late 18, <laughs> so, early 19th so it's, it's been around for a while and it that's a it, it does rust just like any high carbon steel but really whenever you're using a knife regularly and uh looking it over you, you always have a chance to wipe it down with some wd-40 as simple as that weekly mm -hmm. we'll, we'll salvage the thing without without having any problems so it's a great steel it's a it could take abuse even at that high hardness and not not be brittle. Uh, I have one that I I'd carry around. To, I work at a, I, currently my current job. I'd bring it around. There's a couple guys that I, I come across at car dealerships that like knives and the in the technicians. And I can take a knife and drop it right on its point, and it won't damage it. And that kind of kind of proves to me my own heat treat, but also shows these guys why why I'm making these rather than just going out and buying knives it, you, could, you could get a different quality out of out of your own product i think you could dial in geometries and heat treats and recipes and all that and it and really get yourself a high quality knife yeah yeah and and uh anyone who works uh, on concrete with a knife long enough <laughs> will will recognize the value in that in that drop test and you're yeah. uh, you're right about i mean i have i should say anecdotally i have also noticed 
when I take my car into one of two places. The guys all carry knives. And one guy recently, and, and it I feel like a creep sometimes, like, oh, I couldn't help but notice you're carrying a paramilitary, oh, yeah. too. They're like, stop looking at my pocket, you creep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but this guy had a Maximet, and he couldn't t- uh, he couldn't stop talking about how awesome it was. Um, well, yes, he could. I guess I couldn't stop talking about how awesome it was. But he was like, he loved that blade steel for what he was doing, working yeah. uh, working in a, in a shop there. Yeah, so that that makes sense. So so as you transition, not transition, as you um, start acquiring skills, um, some taken from your your other life, but but uh, and your career, but uh, some newly acquired. Do you do you have mentors or people that have shown you things along the way? No, not not at all, really. Uh, just just guys that I met online through uh, Instagram, other makers, seeing their seeing what they do and then something catching your eye. So you have to research And I'm good about research and reading something to death and then, then going out there and jumping right into it. So if there's something, something new that I see or, or want to know about, I'll, I'll figure it out and take it from there and just dive in until, until I figure out what's, what works and what doesn't. And, and hopefully yeah. it's, it's usually fairly quickly. So I'm not spending a lot of money on waste of time and all, but it's, it is a learning process, all of it, and you kind of you do earn it as you go through. I mean, imagine what this uh, what what this experience for you would be like without internet. And now I'm being oh, presumptuous yeah. here, but I would imagine it has a lot to do with uh, your learning here. And in the old days, and not even that long ago, um, you know, you'd have to get in your car and you'd have to drive somewhere and you'd have to seek this out. It, you know, I think about this a lot. Like my parents uh, have always been. Uh, travelers and and they were they were putting trips together before the internet how the heck did they do that you know but it's the same thing with something like this you would have to go seek out find where knife makers are and then get in touch with them either on the phone or write them a letter or show up at their doorstep and you know take you a lot longer even if you have the um you know the natural uh uh, uh, inclination to be a maker that's honestly how i learned a lot of the uh car stuff I know. I was always into automotive body work, fabrication and paint and auto body. So I'd have my mom take me to the the uh, library and look up every book that I can find on it, whether they were any good or not, probably, probably 10, 20, 30 years old. So it's outdated information, but good. And then you start trying and you meet, you meet other grown men in the industry and you ask them questions and you ask the same questions to everyone you can find and then figure out what seems right, what seems wrong and, and go from there, trial and error and you start taking you taking you longer than nowadays, but you'd learn how to do it with your own trial and error and the knowledge that you've gained of asking questions. So you're you're a hundred percent correct on that one. Have you been to Blade Show or any other knife shows? No, I, I, last year I, I was wanting to get, or actually this this past Blade Show, I've wanted to get there. I didn't have anything to show. I uh, they accepted me to show if I wanted to, but I was I wasn't at the the point I through family project, house projects and stuff. I didn't have enough inventory or anything to show. So this coming, this coming, uh, one in, in the summer of, uh, 23, I'd love to be there. I'd love to be at, at the position that I have, a uh, plenty to show there. So that is my, one of my goals coming up here and I'm so close to it. I'm about five hours away. So it's not, not oh, too cool. hard to get out there. Well, even, even if you, even if you don't, I mean, I, uh, uh, what I mean is even if you don't have the the stock you want to bring, um, it is very, it's such a great time, first of all, but it's so amazing uh, to be there and just be surrounded by, you know, like hundreds Martin. and thousands yeah. of people who, not hundreds of thousands, but hundreds and probably over a thousand people there who oh, yeah. love. Yeah, oh, I watch nice. videos of it when it's happening. I, I watch all those guys having fun and I'm sure you're there, but it, It'd be it'd be nice to meet people that I've talked to through Instagram and and seen seen their work and see it in person and just the overall when you when you love knives I guess we're in a, in a way are all knife junkies and this this is what captivates our our attention and hobby it'd, it'd be amazing to go see it see it what the U.S. has to show you there that's really what's going on so yeah. it's all the innovations through the year and design all 
I'm sure it's an amazing, amazing show to get to. It um, is. And you know what? I, I kicked myself. Uh, uh, I've only been twice, but both times I've kicked myself because there's an entire part of the room full of stuff that I love, like old World War II era things, folders, fixed blade knives, randles and stuff. And I'll walk by them because I know what those look like. I want to see new makers. And then I'm like, oh, but I should have bought a Randall while I was there or something like that. Do you collect, uh, do you have any knives uh, left over from before you started making the things you uh, carry? I do have a bunch. Uh, a lot of them are, are just sub $100 knives that I was just using to use up and, and use them until they fall apart kind of thing. And I have a couple of good bench maids and, and spider co's and, stuff like that but it's uh i've moved around i moved out to tennessee about five years ago so some of it got lost in the move some of they're just to me work knives so i don't have any kind of valuable collection like a lot of a lot of guys do i, I have a couple couple that i hold on to but it's it's nothing that i'm no no show pieces or showcase kind of things uh, now that i'm now that i'm making these things uh i i did recently buy a uh <laughs> This is the first folder I bought, and I was I was looking up as a Kaiser. Ooh, I don't even know what it is, but sweet. I was yeah. looking up a sheep foot, and it, it, I like the design and the my card on it, so I, I cheap enough to grab and, and just carry it as a. That that's a uh, that's got a weird name. It's called the Towser K, but that's yeah. a, that is like one of the smoothest knives I've ever uh, opened and closed. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's, uh, it seems like it's geometry. It just uh. It just it, it's smooth as can be, especially for a a, a seventy dollar knife. So I'll I'll try knives out like that, and I'll I won't care about them too much. I'll just use them up, and once they fall apart, they fall apart. It's it's no big deal. You pick up the next one if if you choose to, or you carry you carry one of your own little fixed blades that you decided to design the night before just to keep you keep you moving with it. So uh, is is that how quickly you can bring an idea uh, into reality, just kind of overnight, so to speak? Yeah, it depends on what I'm doing. If I'm working on a run of knives, then I'm, I try to stay focused just so I don't break my focus, I have a, a process that I'm working through. Uh, I set up little bins of every, every one of them in their stage and just keeping it moving. But uh, this this particular knife, I've been dealing with... Uh, I've been dealing with the run of these for a couple of weeks now, just trying to pin down the hardware and everything I needed. So just to keep get my mind out of it, I threw this one together and it was based off of a design that I drew a couple of weeks ago. And last night I was a uh, I saw a piece of steel that called my name and, <laughs> you know, I wanted to get it together. So this was a matter of uh, an hour or two last night to get it roughed in. And then after work today, threw some handles together, then threw it try to get it heat treated and ready to go for this particularly. I didn't, I didn't make it to the final grind of it. It just, it actually just came out of the, uh, the kiln for tempering just before we, we got on here. Oh, I love. Okay. So, uh, uh, just to honor that, hold that up real close to the screen. I, I want to see this. Look at that. That is beautiful. I, I love that handle material. It looks like, like some sort of coral or undersea, uh, it is creature. Jade G10 with uh, an epoxy in it, and it's it's a router, a routing machine, uh, CNC router that out. I think his name is uh, Broyan Scales. He makes a okay. he uses a, a similar machine, the CNC router that I have, but he's he's machining out uh, micartas and and all kinds of stuff just to just to fill infill with epoxy and. And this was one of the first scales that I bought from them, and uh, I finally decided to use it. They're they're a uh, quarter inch thick, so I figured to uh, wait for a smaller knife. And and I, I actually just ordered a, a handful, probably enough for five five to ten knives, more of his material, not this exact kind, but other stuff, just because I like sm supporting small makers of handle materials, and and he's making some nice stuff, and I'm I'm. I'm getting into synthetic synthetic handle material. I have a drawer with thousands of dollars worth of fine fine stabilized wood, but synthetics are, are kind of calling my name right now. So that's that's the beauty of these small batches. You kind of just get to float through whatever whatever calls your name at the moment, whatever style you're looking in for. So so this well, happens to be probably something you'll see on the next run or so of knives is, is something that he's made. 
it's cool because it's the same with the sheath so you get to you get to sort of freely express yourself yeah with the little runs you also do custom stuff um uh, you uh, what i'm what i'm trying to say is you have custom patterns that you make uh but what about uh, if a customer comes to you and says i want you to make me a bowie knife for instance uh is that something that you do oh then, then this enters the, the screen <laughs> yeah oh that is cool so so this is the first the biggest knife i've ever made uh, i was asked for uh i think a 12 i can't remember exactly i think this is 12 inch blade but this is a uh, he wanted a he wanted some sort of chopper so this is this is what i came up for him kind of the camp knife has saw teeth on the back the back side there put a fuller in it just to just to lighten the blade up some and uh Give you a give you a good grip, that a full, is nice full sweet. grip, chopping knife. So this one is this one is one of those one of those custom knives. And while custom knives take me a little longer, just because it's a you kind of have to reinvent the wheel every single time. Mm. Where where I'm trying to get to the point where uh, I'm trying to get to the point where I have that these these production type knives where you can just keep keep them in the loop and you can just change them up and make them something, but you can always go in and have have a knife that is is something that you've designed for oh, someone, that. and maybe you'll make it again, maybe you won't. But it's it's a uh, on that custom. See, this one is a W two as well, and it, it hadn't been sanded out, but there's there's a Hamon ghost hiding in there somewhere. Yeah, I can a, see it. I can see it. That knife is sweet. I really like the sort of Spanish notch. And the guard yeah. that is very and this is this is the cool. first I've done that I've uh I've always either either put something on there on the guard or not but this one I wanted to go a little little deeper with it and and try putting some shape in, in an area that I haven't gone that that far into yet so yeah that's this, dramatic this, that's a this dramatic one's one move. of a kind right now and I do like it and I, I'll likely make another one at some point but it's a uh, it's one of those. Custom knives, unfortunately, they cost a little more when it comes down to it, just because you're it's a one off thing and you, you you can't get in this rhythm. You're right. that, even as a knife maker, your your rhythm is making knives, but you get to a point where if you make the same knife, you can be more efficient with it, where uh these custom ones kind of throw you off a little bit, but it's yeah, I, I I work in a creative field and some things you just have to do over and over again and and if you're smart about it after a while you have created a you've problem solved that process and you've created yeah. a, a process that works every time and and then you can't imagine how you did it before you knew that yeah. stuff um and so that's, yeah that that's exactly where i'm i'm trying to get i'm trying to force that out of me with with these type of knives is is getting to this rhythm where it's the process that i just that I, that i always do and that i can always count on and uh where where these custom knives are uh they're all epoxy together and and different so truly like a lanyard hole for if you ever had to tie this lace this thing to a stick and make a spear you have the option kind of thing so it's a, yeah. so it's it's one of those i'll do it but i'm, I'm trying to grow myself and, and and kind of force a business plan per se out and and, and it's it, while it's still going to exist it's it's not my main focus anymore where uh these these runs of things and that's why i'm i'm hunting for that perfect profile that's a popular one that i can know i can i can pay to have water jet cut and and count on them them moving rather than just sitting on there on something that was a decent idea but didn't turn out yeah that's that is a i think that's a valuable thing to know we talk I, I, I bring this up a lot. Uh, there's the, the idea of having one or two or three designs that you perfect yeah. over years and you just iterate and reiterate and reiterate. And, and so I call that like the Chris Reeve knives model kind of, and then there's the tops model who's got 50 billion models and they're always almost all available except for the ones that are totally out of print. Um, and both of those are exciting to me. I love both of those because I, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I do call myself a junkie. So I love the variety yeah. of the, of the tops, but the concept of sticking with a design, once you've dialed it in 
and just every once in a while tweaking it you know over the last 12 years we learned we should do this and you can't yeah. even see the difference but it makes yeah. the knife better i love that concept and, and that's that's a uh, somewhat it's a rough idea to try to get to that point but uh that's where these runs the creative side will be the the material that goes into it whether it's different steel maybe it maybe i do do a run of all w2 where they're 100 percent unique with their hamon kind of thing but you're I want to try to, even if I have a lineup of knives, which maybe I'm shooting for about five of them, uh, even if I have that lineup, every time I, I make a run, you can at least have something different than you you had the, the last buyers had. So you're always they're always a collectible in in some way. Are these uh, serial numbered or dated in any way? Um, right now, uh, I haven't got that deep into it, other than. Uh, the wolf knife kind of thing like yeah. wolf or that run that particular run this the huh. sheath is kind of what's what's labeling these runs or, or right 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 the artwork on there so i do need i have a hard time naming inanimate, inanimate objects so it's a uh, my brother-in-law has been on me he's like just give it a name and that uh, i don't name i've never named car I've samuel named cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it seems odd to me but it, it's a necessary thing and i gotta figure it out but as of right now uh the the artwork on the sheath is is what is uh what's what's keeping track of these particular runs is is you you won't see it again once they're gone kind of thing but that that'll only be until like say say like uh earlier i said i'd like to start using kydex once i start doing that i do need to put a number to it a name to them and, and try to try to keep them distinguished in that that kind of way so are these all spoken for uh this current run with these uh with the artwork on the sheaths no they aren't uh i haven't actually officially said they are for sale yet but i have uh i have taken a couple pre-orders so there there are probably four of the 12 missing of uh each of the there, there's 12 total six of the drop points six of the sheep foot but there's there's three tans and then there are three uh three grays out of out of the drop point the six of them and then three of each color of the the sheep's foot as well and i know i know one of the sheep's foot's gone and two of the drop points and i believe they're all gray right now if i'm remembering right i'll have to go back and look it through through emails but uh th there's still a handful of each color left of each profile so uh how would how would someone watching get in touch with you too. Oh, uh, you can go on to the website and then contact my website is uh tristarknives.com. You can go on there and contact me directly through email or you can find me on uh Instagram is usually where where I'm you're you're trying to feed an algorithm kind of thing. So <laughs> I'm usually always a present on there. It's easy to easy to keep in, in your hand on your phone kind of thing. So message me on there or either way there there's ways to get a hold of me through Facebook, Instagram or website and and claim one. Which, All right. Uh, so, so speaking of the website, uh, there's something I, I want to, uh, you had something that we haven't talked about at all, which is that Tonto is so cool. Uh, I don't know if you have that around you or not, but, uh, but is that, is that one that, uh, you have ordinarily on offer or, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this, this is, one. Yeah. Yeah. This was made at a request of a, a friend of mine and, uh, I, I have wax, axe wax, so it's not rusting in the drawer over there. But it's a, uh, it's not something. Of, I made two of them, or I made three of them. One of them, one of them's long gone. With a, a guy picked it up, and uh, this is this this guy is. It's the same knife for same same owner of these two. Yeah. So these are uh, these were an old old style. You can see it's it's much bigger than anything that I've, I've showed you just a little bit ago and it's a little different style this was this was me trying to develop what i'm what i'm making and and trying to put cool finishes on it so it's a it's an interesting interesting patina on there and it's a it's a it's hard to see in this light but it's a cross cut micarta oh, nice. segmented scale and a spalted maple i believe for the 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 handle material a tapered tang so this this would be a custom knife. This is something that that I, I you probably won't see in the lineup. This uh this compound grind here is yeah, uh, the, it's it's a difficult one. These this was the first one that I tried out and it worked out. So I did it 
two more times, one with the smaller one here and then one with exactly the same, uh, but it has a blue, a blue handle. So it, it was a difficult process to just wing it, but it worked out. And uh, I don't love Tonto's, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm like, I'm not the guy carrying the knives, all the knives yeah. that I make. So it really doesn't matter what I love. Uh, but uh, I do love that Tonto. And yeah. uh, and and when you were just holding up, I was I was noticing. Yeah, I, I didn't even see the swedge or notice the swedge in the photograph. But like all, all of the that's a difficult grind. You've got a hollow grind. A flat grind and the swedges and all of that. Yeah, that uh, that's part of that's part of that that deterrent <laughs> as uh, yeah, right. Uh, for for doing it again, but it's like I said, uh, these worked out first try. Just uh, came out of nowhere and it, it worked out. So I'd imagine if I put my mind to it again, I'd, I could pull definitely pull it off. So it's a uh, all of all of the. These are the only two that I still have out of those, but they all they all have nice lines in them. And this was uh these were made a little while ago, so I'd imagine with uh, the as many knives as I made since then, it should it shouldn't be too hard to make, and it make it even more clean, crisp lines in it. And uh, gotcha. another beautiful thing about fifty two one hundred, it's a it machines really well. So once it's hardened, you can get crispy like real crisp. Uh, bevels in it so you're nowadays my my plunge lines are always mm. they seem to they seem to work for me so it's a my technique works out so that's that's the with with one of these tontos uh, i would like to try it again i'd probably change it up a little so it's not just a big this is a big beefy blade here so yeah. kind of streamline it a little and and make something of it i'm sure I'd, i'm sure i'd be willing to do many more of them <laughs> Well, I mean, I could see how you could translate that into the kind of current sleek language you're dealing with with the other three small yeah. knives, though, with the Warren Cliff yeah. drop point and the uh, and the original sort of almost spear point one. Um, <clears throat> how automated do you want to get uh, as you as you continue? I would like to uh, since I have I know uh, I know your plasma cutter isn't the ideal thing to cut out your profiles because it uh it's too much heat along your edge so you have to oversize the knife and and it and account for all that water jet cutting or laser is likely the way to go but that would be one thing that i'd like to do just i, I spend i spend a lot of time sitting here I, I got i got all kinds of profiles like this that i've had to truly cut out and refine and drill like everyone else does but if mm -hmm. i can if I could speed that process up, I could make more knives. And uh, another thing is, once I do get to the point where that process is something I can dead count on, I can also utilize uh, my routing machine, my my CNC router, to help create my handle. So mm. if it's if it's a handle, if these two things could work with me here, I could potentially say I could create thirty knives a month as as a goal of mine. If I could do that, then then. Uh, I could almost make this into to a full-time job. Now, whether I could sell 30 knives a month, who knows, but it's, it's one of those challenges. Let me see, let me see what I am capable of doing and then do it again and do it again and, and go from there. Just try to repeat this. And uh, I don't, I'm not looking to be a gigantic production knife business, but it, it'd be nice to be to, to produce a good amount of knives where really what I, what come down to is finishing is all by hand, all, uh, and, Grinding the bevels will all be by hand, just because I, I can't imagine uh, setting up to CNC bevels at the moment. That's that's. <laughs> if I could get profiles down and handles down, I'd be be in heaven with it. So uh, I'll stick at the grinder with grinding out my my bevels and be happy. So uh, the idea is to make it impractical to have another job. Yeah, well, my job right now is I fix water leaks in cars, rainwater leaks. So in Tennessee here, it rains, so you end up having a wet floor or a stain on your headliner. And then you take your car to a dealership. They call me, and I come in, and I uh, and I, I figure out what the problem is, and I fix it. So if it doesn't rain, I don't have work. So that's what started the knife, the knife thing is I needed something that's going to that's gonna, and I get paid commission, commission based. So, 
while I wasn't working, I needed something to do to generate some sort of income and knife making came into the picture and, and, and I love it. So, and I've already told the business I work for, it's a really small family business and I'm the only guy in Tennessee, this side that does this. So I've, I've gave them the heads up that this is what I, I'm a knife maker as well. So whenever, whenever it's time for it to become full time, I'm, I'm welcoming it. And, in my business plan, I've recently, uh, I've kind of pushed car, my own car business. I, I wanted to be a, a manufacturer of aftermarket parts for uh, Porsches. And I, and I was, oh, cool. I had to make a decision just recently and sell off this uh, Porsche Cayman that I had. I'm actually wearing a Porsche Club America shirt. But I, I sold off this car to tell myself my focus is knives. So now that I've done that, uh, I'm Porsche Cayman list, so I have to I have to prove that the knives were the right decision, and and if it's full time, uh, that that's the goal is to to do this full time, and I, and there has to be a solid business plan with it. You, you can wing it, you could be a hobbyist business and make make a little money here and there as a hobbyist, but uh, I'd love to see what this what this market can actually do for me, and uh, and, and I hope I hope I can pull something out. And, and this is where the efficiencies come into play where CNC router can help me make handles, uh, water jet cutting or CNC plasma can help me make this part of the process because you, n these knives aren't $500 knives by any means. So now, now your, your answer is some sort of volume and some sort of something, mm, bit, yeah. a, bit of move, a, a volume of knives at a decent price. And it's hard to compete with overseas markets. So that's a, you kind of, create a uniqueness and art artistic style and, and move on from there and figure out how to do it, repeat it and, and grow with it. So that's, that's the goal at the moment. I, I would say you've already signaled your intent with that sacrifice uh, yeah. of the Porsche. I, yeah. I, 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 oh, I, I was sad for, uh, I've been wanting, I've been wanting that car for um, since it came out when I was, I was younger, 20 is that car is a 2006 Cayman S. So beautiful car. Mm -hmm. And it's a, uh, they're still beautiful cars nowadays. They they handle great, and and, uh, and I have an eye for automotive design. So, I, in my custom body work, I I like tasteful mods. So that market has a uh, room to grow in it, but it's it's costly, like you would imagine. So it uh, it was a it was a decision in in this current uh, uh, economy. Was it smart to be holding on to a toy car that you're only going to go deeper in mm -hmm. and abandon the knife business to to embrace that or abandon the car and embrace the knife business and knives one? You know, Matt, every time I, I get on myself for collecting knives and spending money, I probably shouldn't. Uh, I think, well, at least I'm not into watches or cars. <laughs> I mean, I could be yeah. easily, but I've never allowed myself to go See, there. <laughs> I still, I held on. I have, I have three other Porsches right now, and they're, they're of course, <laughs> yes. they're of course the nine forty fours, the the cheap, the cheap one. Yeah. And then I have an old seventy three nine fourteen, which uh oh yeah, used, I remember the nine fourteen. Used to be the little turd of the Porsche world, but those yeah. things have uh, skyrocketed in value, and mine's in good shape. And I'm gonna modify it more, but those things are valuable cars nowadays, and it's surprising. So I did hold on to. Hold on to the cars that I that I've had for years. I just could didn't hold on to the one that I I really wish I could have. But. Well, sell sell um, more of these knives, and someday you'll get that yeah. Cayman that Cayman back. Hopefully. Matt, I, I want to thank you for coming on the Knife Junkie podcast, sir. It's been a it's been a pleasure Absolutely. meeting you Thanks and seeing your me. knives up close. Oh, it's it's my pleasure. Uh, so uh, let everyone know how the best way to keep up with you and and uh, your uh, releases. Check out uh, my website for one. My brother-in-law is the one that's created that. He's done an awesome job. Nice site. And he, he keeps adding to it at any request I have or any great ideas. So you can always contact me through there, through email. And uh, he's going to always be updating that with the new releases and the new ideas coming up. And then also, mm -hmm. me personally, uh, I'm constantly feeding Instagram. I'm just trying to create content to keep 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 seeing, really. And, uh, and uh, it's easy for me to stay on there. So I'm always usually daily we'll post updates on what I'm doing, what I'm working on and what's available. And we'll answer any message that comes across there. So with, uh, with those Facebook's the same way, it's a little slower updating than Instagram naturally just because of Instagram's right at your fingertips, but it's, uh, I do update those update that daily or every other day. So 
any any of those methods, you can get a hold of me. Ask me where I'm at with whatever you're seeing or whatever you might want, and uh, we can move from there. If you do decide that you you want want something that I do make, yeah. One more time, just hold up the the sheath and the knife and a knife. These sheaths are are incredible. So this is the sheath for what is available right now, and this will be the exact same sheath that goes with this as the drop point and this sheep's foot knife nice so these are the these are the options for both of these things you get uh two these. profiles one in gray gray tarot tough and uh in tan and both profiles have both option on them okay and these things will someday have a name but in, until yeah. then <laughs> they're just things <laughs> they're tri-star knives yeah, yeah. drop point sheep put <laughs> <laughs> matt thank you so much for coming on the show sir thanks for having me i've been a pleasure do you use terms like handle the blade ratio walk and talk hair pop and sharp or tank like then you are a dork and a knife junkie there he goes, Matt Markin of TriStar Knives. I love the idea of the one-of-a-kind knife, uh, knives in one-of-a-kind sheaths with the original artwork on it. Very, very cool. I love uh, seeing makers going above and beyond and, and just uh, exceeding expectations and giving us a little bit more of themselves in their work. So uh, really awesome stuff. All right, so be sure to join us next Sunday for another interview and uh, Wednesday for the Midweek Supplemental. And don't forget Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. Until then, and for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.